music does in fact live on. Sax player, guitarist, and all-round great guy. Kirk Pengelly joins us this morning from, from Mexico. No, well, <laughs> on Sydney's <laughs> northern beaches. It's great to see you, Kirky. Thank you for coming on the show, mate. 45 morning, years. Richard. Congratulations. What, what are your earliest memories of when you hooked up with Michael and Gary and those fabulous Ferris brothers? <sighs> Well, it was the 70s. I don't really remember anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, look, you know, the interesting thing was is that the three brothers in the band, uh, Tim, Andrew and John, never performed, you know, never kind of jammed together or performed together. Yeah. And it wasn't until, um, it wasn't until so Timmy sensitive. put together like a, a kind of a jam session uh, the first time we all played together in, in, in that lineup. Um, that, you know, we, it was the first time that the three brothers had sort of played together in, in a band. Mm. Um, and, and I, you know, I remember that first, that first sort of rehearsal jam session we had together and we all felt there was something special, you know, yeah. there was something kind of a chemistry. I don't know if it was just the brother thing, but there was, you know, a chemistry. I mean, Andrew and Michael had a band, John was playing in another band, Tim and I had, had a band before that. So coming together it was yeah it was it was really special yeah it certainly was i remember those early gigs you know with simple simon and uh, you, you guys were just yeah. right from the start you're out of the box and off and away one of the reasons that, that that you guys made it so so big was you 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 know you traveled to the states you didn't just go there on tour you you, you lived there you worked relentlessly yeah. i mean you set an example for every other aussie act um on how to do it how hard was that in those early days Look, uh, you know, we, I think we were so passionate about, you know, about our music and, and what we were trying to do. And I think, you know, we were still young. Um, and I think uh, all of that, we just, we just had like a whole lot of get up and go. So yeah. um, I, I, think, I think to a certain extent, you know, it was all, it was a brave new world. You know, we, we felt like we were sort of treading new territory and, uh, and you know, breaking, breaking down doors and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, look, it, look, it was a lot of fun, but it was, a, it was a lot of hard work. Yeah. Um, you know, we, some of the tours, uh, we did back in those early eighties in America and whatever were nine months long. Yeah, so right. we were away from home, you know, for nine months. But that's what it took, you yeah. know, for us. We, we felt we, we could, you know, we'd get a, get our message across by performing live. Mm. Um, that was our sort of our, our mainstay. So that's what we did. Your music, as I alluded to in the intro, you know, can't be put into a box. You've got the beautiful ballads, the rock songs, the funk, the groove, the dance. It's a real fusion. I know it was hard for the record companies to, what is this? You know, what is this stuff? But the, the songs sound as fresh today as they did then, don't they? they I mean, they really yeah. do. Yeah, they do. It's it's interesting. I mean, I think you know we're always we're always wanting to explore new you know new sounds and new uh, you know new genres of music. And as you say, you know we weren't we weren't locked into one kind of sound. So I don't know. I, I think um, I think you know the reason it probably sounds fresh today is because we tried to use the best people we could. Uh, you know, in producers, Mark Opitz, obviously, and, and Chris Thomas, um, who were our main producers over the years. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it was just that we could play our instruments and we just made sure that when we recorded stuff, it, it was something that we could put on stage and play live. Yeah. So it's just, it's, it's raw, it's, it's, you know, organic, it's natural. Um, and, hey, and it's Kirky. just a bunch of guys. Yep. Such is the power of the brand. There's a whole new audience for you guys now enjoying through uh, digital releases, TikTok streaming. Um, it must be, it must be a great feeling. Yeah, it is. Um, who'd have thunk, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, uh, again, as you know, we were just talking about how, how it still sounds good. I think that's a big part of it too, you know, but, um, yeah, look, it, it, it's, uh, who, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just so grateful and, and thankful that, uh, we created the music we did and people still love listening to it. Well, it's, it's quite, amazing. It's quite the milestone. I know you wanted to give a shout out to the Manly Encore Festival on Sunday. You're an ambassador and your stable mates, the Buckleys, are playing there, yeah? That's going to be cool. Yeah, on Sunday. Yeah, it's a, it's a 10 day festival in Manly trying to bring live music back to Manly and, uh, and, and just, you know, trying to get out enjoying themselves again and, uh, and seeing live music, live comedy. It's fantastic, yeah. You're a good man, Kirk. I might just come down and have a little tequila with you tomorrow after <laughs> the Manly Festival. Sounds good. Good man. Thank <laughs> you, Kirk, very much indeed. Kirk Pengelly from In Excess, quite the milestone, Charles and Bell.